Um, so I've come here to find out what kind of state of play is. So I'm, I, I suppose I'm a, somewhat an imposter. I'm an engineer by training. I did a PhD in computer programming. So I sort of know my way around IT. Uh, but now I run a theater. Um, and so I'm trying to work out how to, mer how to merge the things I don't know about, which is how you run a theater, and things I do know a little bit about, which is IT. Nobody who thinks they know about IT actually doesn't, because those other ones have realized, because IT is huge, it takes over the whole world. Um, so just very quickly, then, just to contextualize, which I think is what I was supposed to do, is tell you who Arcola is. How many of you know Arcola? So I don't need to bore you with Arcola. Arcola Theatre in Hackney, East London. Um, relatively small studios, up 200 seats. We keep adding new studios as the whims of our various landlords around us allow us, and then closing studios as they turn them into flats. Um, Great artistic program, not to do with me. Um, does very, very well. Very innovative, very Web 2.0 mm -hmm. like kind of organization. Runs on bugger all money, loads of volunteers, loads of people engaged, actually does some really amazing art. Um, so I joined about five years ago, was set up about 10 years ago. Um, and added this third strand, professional theatre, youth and community theatre, as you'd expect. I've added this energy strand. So we, we don't worry, really splinter the picture. This is three strands of business. Professional theatre, as you would expect, the youth and community programme, you don't get funded if you don't do it, it's also social justice and the reason I'm there. And a third strand then is around sustainability and technology. So it's just bringing engineering and technology into an arts organisation. Across the bottom there's just your general what it takes to run a venue, um, which I guess is what quite a bit of this IT stuff relates to. Um, that's the theatre, obviously most of you know it, shabby old warehouse in East London. Uh, studio, terrible picture of the studio, I need to get a better one. It's obviously between shows, uh, but just to give you a sense, it's not red velvet seats in the preceding march, it's a warehouse space painted black. Um, this is the schematic for what we're trying to do. Um, so, very schematically, this is roughly our existing building. Artists on the ground floors, middle floors, youth and community studios, top <coughs> floor is a technology incubator. So that's putting engineers in an arts building. Um, so that's particularly around sustainable technology, so that fuel cells, I worked with the guys that they were talking about, the hydrogen car guys. Um, stuff around low energy lighting, what you can put into theatre spaces, but also of course inevitably out of that comes IT. So that's why I suppose I'm here, because we're about to launch a load of major IT projects. I hope we're going to save us loads of money. Um, all drives crazy. Um, just generally, yeah, you can you can do theatre on low energy if you need to compromise artistically. Um, these are the geeks on the roof. Um, this is, again, this engineer idea of just putting geeks into an arts building. Um, this idea of the artistic and the autistic, I would argue, <laughs> <laughs> more in common than, than, not, than not in common. Um, and it's administration that we all hate. Um, so actually, if you use your IT system right, we all get happy because we've got this boring admin to do. Um, general thing about the big push for us is we're, we're about to turn half our building into flats. So we're about to try and build a new building, or find a new building in Dalston, which is plowing ahead. Uh, the other thing, I suppose the big sustainability push for us is around sustainability, um, environmental sustainability across everything you do and everything using arts to drive sustainability. And actually the IT components that become quite key in terms of engaging people and getting, in terms of taking a small organisation and pushing it across the world. Um, and also just the general efficiencies of getting away from crap computers that take up loads of energy to efficient computers that don't. Um, so, three IT projects I suppose ongoing for me at the moment. One is dealing with growth. Five years ago there were two of us, now there's 15 of us. Uh, turnover's gone up from a quarter of a million to a million. Uh, it's a nightmare. Every week something breaks. I have to change the way with our IT. I deal, deal with our IT, which is a bad thing. Um, and so yeah, every week you're having to change your systems. Uh, you start off with a couple, of, a couple of laptops, I pinched from somewhere or other, We're running all dodgy software. You start to buy more laptops. I think we've got 18 laptops now. There you go, 18 laptops. Unix file server, dedicated web server down at Canary Wharf, network printers, wireless access points. It's so boring. It just drives you nuts. Every day something breaks. Um, so to start to look at, there's got to be a better way of doing this. This kind of incremental growth when you just take one hard fast system and double it and double it and double it and double it, <coughs> it just stops working. Um, so that was, that's the one component. The second one then that we started on in a kind of prototype approach um, was we built our own box office system. Um, joining the arts, as the idea that you would pay 5% commission to something to run your ticketing system was just abhorrent. So we built our own box office system, um, subbed it out to an IT development company who weren't very good, crap project management. So we've been running a prototype system that doesn't really work for two or three years now, trying to find the money to rebuild it. 
I just decided this year, we haven't got any money, I'm going to rebuild it anyway, otherwise all my staff are going to quit. Um, so that's the next big one, so it's building custom box office management for the organisation and a kind of that CRM thing, basically how to get money out of rich people. Um, so building all of those into the same system. Um, is it a good idea to build your own? I'd be interested to get some feedback, because that's why I'm here. Um, and having looked at the system people are using, it's quite terrifying how bad IT is. <laughs> Even in those organisations, they've got some money and weight behind them. Uh, I go to Batsy Art Centre, I expect their IT approach to be kind of like ours. I go to the Almeida, I expect some people sophisticated. It's amazing, actually. I did mention them, sorry. Um, <laughs> the, just, they're, they're not doing it right, because we're all too busy. Um, and then the other one then, coming out of all of that, around cost and around trying to work out better ways of administering things, sorry, that was the, the website on that. Um, the, sorry, the other bit about the kind of bus, custom box office thing, there's all this web 2.0 stuff, Facebook and Vile, I'm too old already to deal with that stuff. But having some web guy that can integrate that with whatever some young intern comes and tells us we should be using some platform where you can just whack it in, and when it goes out of fashion, drag it out again. Um, and then the boring stuff around data protection and security. You can reach a certain scale, and yes, people do start to hack our websites now. So you've got to avoid that. Um, so the big thing for them, for me, okay, I've got a load of boring uh, administrative making my systems work problems. I've got some quite interesting stuff, I think, around changing our relationship with IT and actually doing positive, useful stuff. And kind of out of come, all of that comes this approach to moving into open source software. Um, so this is basically moving away from Microsoft and into stuff you download for free. Um, somebody put it very nicely to me, it was Microsoft stuff is really easy to learn, but really hard to use. Open source stuff is usually quite hard to learn, but quite easy to use. And quite an in interesting distinction. You say, oh, it's really easy to, easy to use. You know what you mean, it's easy to learn. You just pick it up and click on it, and use it badly for years without realizing. And so there's quite a big overhead, the question about do we really need to learn all these boring acronyms in order to improve our IT? Basically do. Because if you do, it will save you massive amounts of time later. In my own take, I manage various IT projects on both sides. Is that typically the problem with IT is people think it's just this annoying thing, we should just get out of my way. What they've touched on already is your IT moves into your management. So IT people who fix websites end up doing management consultancy because they need to understand your management system so they can implement the right IT system. And people never put the right level of staff into the IT project to be able to do day to day filling the block and, oh, hang on a minute, that's a crap business model, maybe we should change it. Um, so that's why to me, as a chief exec, the IT stuff is fascinating. Um, so in that transition to open source, okay, so I want to put in a proper network now. I can't afford Microsoft en Enterprise, this, that, the other. Mm. You can get open source stuff that basically does all that for free if you've got a friend that knows how to do it. Um, and as again, you touched on finding the right IT consultant at the right level, perhaps lives locally so he can come in when something breaks. Or the right mixture of somebody really shit hot and some teenager around the corner who can come in when the printer breaks. Getting that mix right. Um, and so for me, that's about moving migrated onto open source, you get rid of Microsoft completely. Not because I'm particularly against them, just because they're expensive and I can't do piracy anymore. Um, so you need to find a replacement for Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, <coughs> Open Office. I've just started using it this week, we'll see whether it works or not. Um, email, you've got to get away from Outlook into Thunderbird. For internet, you move away from Internet Explorer into Firefox. These are the fairly easy ones. Then you've got to make it talk to your network printer and your Blackberry and that wireless dongle thing that you use when you're on, on the bus. So these are the things we've just started to play with now, see whether it's possible. We've also then got the operating system, so we've got six different types of laptop. If it takes two hours for somebody to work out 